While I was traveling in New England, I found myself surrounded by people. I haven't been surrounded by people for a very long time, and it felt weird, very weird, not least because there's a pandemic and there's a virus, and it just was like, is this okay? Luckily, we were following all the state and local guidelines, being smart, and I found myself going through this really weird mind process. First being scared that I was around people, and then being like, oh, but I'm wearing a mask, and so it's probably fine. I'm wearing a mask, masks protect me. But then being like, but do masks actually work? Didn't the CDC and WHO come out and say like, don't buy masks, masks aren't the most important thing here. Which was really annoying that they then reversed their position. Anyway, it got me just thinking, what does a mask actually do? And is it actually protecting me when I am around other people? And I did what I always do when this sort of thing comes up and I went on a deep dive. We put masks. surgical masks on And I want to explain to you four major takeaways I've had about masks. By the way, this really cool green mask that I'm wearing and a bunch of other ones that you'll see me wearing in this video uh, come from my friends over at Bioskin who make really nice, comfortable masks that are breathable and wonderful and I'm gonna talk about them later. For now, let's talk about the science of masks. Takeaway number one, your breath is kind of like a rocket ship. The ignition and a little of light. Bear with me on this one, I promise it will make sense. Watch this guy sneeze. It's kind of gross, but this process is like a rocket ship for a virus who wants to escape the orbit of your body, make it out into space, and land in the orbit of somebody else's body through this rocket ship, these respiratory droplets. Sometimes that stuff lands on surfaces, like a doorknob, and you touch that surface, and that's how it makes it into your world. Hence the mantra we've heard a million times. But as we got into this virus, more and more scientists started to study how the virus actually moves around. And they started to say with a loud megaphone, as loudly as they could, the virus doesn't just spread through droplets, it also spreads through aerosols. And all of us are like, what the hell are aerosols? And the scientists are like, aerosols are just like the rocket ship, but they're actually more like that little capsule that always breaks off of the rocket ship when all of the fuel parts of the rocket ship fall back down to Earth. This little capsule keeps flying out into space. It's way smaller and it's just floating, not subject to gravity. Okay, so back to this guy. He's not even sneezing now. He's just talking or breathing. And all of this is the aerosols that are emitting out of him, propelled in a specific direction. It turns out that even after the droplets fall to the ground and onto surfaces, the virus can stay in their little hatch, these little aerosols, and can float around, never falling to the ground. This is really important in understanding masks, and I will explain why in a minute. But first, we have to unpack a second big takeaway I've learned while looking into masks, which is that number two, the less virus you get, the less sick you get. This is what I think actually most people get wrong about the virus, and it's actually something that I did not understand until I delved into the science here. Still trying to uh, noodle over what the implications of these findings are for, for uh, masks and which type of masks one needs. I had always thought that if you catch the virus, you're gonna get sick. And how sick you get depends on how good your immune system is. Turns out that's not the case. COVID-19, the disease, and all viruses and their effects are not binary. It's not that you just get them or you don't get them. You can get really bad symptoms, sometimes deadly, and then you can have really mild symptoms, and you can even have it with zero symptoms at all. And one major thing that determines how bad those symptoms are is your viral load, how much of the virus gets into your body. If a really small amount gets in, it's likely that your symptoms will be very, very low. The more virus you get exposed to, the worse your sickness is. This isn't actually a new concept. This is something they've known since the 30s. I guess I didn't know it. And so I always figured it's an on or off switch. You either get it or you don't. And that's just not the case. So yeah, it's a pretty simple thing to understand. I mean, you could go sit through the hour and a half lecture that I did from University of California, or you could even dive into the studies that they did where they put literal masks on hamsters, or you could just take it from me. The less virus you get, the less sick you get. Okay, so we have these two pieces of the puzzle. Number one, the virus can break away from the droplets and turn into aerosols and float through the air and 
get into your body. And number two, the more virus you get, the sicker you get. Okay, let's put those two together to figure out what masks actually do. So, number three, what masks actually do. Once you put on your mask, something happens to everything coming out of your mouth. Let's go back to our space analogy for a second. Putting on your mask is like increasing the gravitational force of your proverbial planet. Imagine how hard it would be for a rocket ship to escape Earth's gravity and get into space if the gravity were five or 10 times more intense. So what a mask actually does is it just increases the gravity of your proverbial planet, makes it a lot harder for something to launch from you into the world. Lots of those droplets get caught in the mask, so that stops them from even escaping in the first place. But the ones that do escape and the aerosols that escape from them have way less momentum. They slow down the trajectory. They create different currents and eddies that keep them in your sphere. So if you're infected and the virus gets out of your body in one of these aerosols, it's much less likely to spread to the people around you. It's just like you have a bunch more gravity. You can see this with this aerosol photography technique. The person with the mask is talking just like the person without. Their aerosols are still escaping, but they get slowed down and they stay within the orbit of the speaker as opposed to getting sprayed out into the world. Masks help direct the particles and aerosols that make it out of your breath when you are talking or coughing or sneezing. Okay, so does this mean that you should only wear a mask if you are sick and you have virus to project out into the world? Which is sort of what they told us at first, let's be honest. No, it turns out there is science now that shows us what masks do to people who are not infected. Let's talk about that second piece of the puzzle that I discovered, which is the more virus you get, the sicker you get. Inevitably, some virus from a droplet or an aerosol will make it out of someone's mask, even if they have a really good mask on, some will come out. Let's say you're nearby when that happens. If you are wearing a mask, there's no way that your mask is going to filter out all of those aerosols and all of those particles. Those particles are too small, they'll slip through your mask. But if you are wearing a mask, inevitably some of those particles will get blocked leading to less virus getting into your body, which can actually mean way less severe symptoms, which could in some cases mean saving a life. Even if it's just 50% that gets blocked, that could have a major effect on how sick you get. In addition, masks protect me from myself. I tend to touch my face like a lot of humans do, just subconsciously. When you're wearing a mask, you don't actually have access to the vital parts of your face that could let virus in. So if you're touching doorknobs or other surfaces that are communal, you suddenly have a blockade from yourself. Which leads me to my last and most important point, which is that the math of masks is insane. You really better wear a mask. So quick recap, masks make the proverbial gravity around your proverbial planet more intense so that it's much harder for things to escape your orbit. And for the wearer who is not infected, it helps stop some particles from getting into your system, leading to a smaller viral dose leading to less symptoms. So imagine if all of these forces come together. You're in a public space and everyone is wearing a mask. Everyone is getting the gravitational effect, they're getting the filtering effect, they're getting the don't touch my face effect, all for themselves and for each other. When this happens, something magical occurs. Atish Bhatia and Minute Physics did a collaboration on this to unpack the probability math that occurs when everyone wears a mask. Masks are also complicated because they fly in the face of our mathematical intuition. What they show is that there's this multiplier effect, that when everyone is wearing a mask, the probabilities of transmission go down dramatically, more than you would ever expect. This helps me understand a major question I had while I've been in the COVID-19 data, mainly when I was working on the New York Times piece. I was looking at all this data, especially in Asia, a lot of these countries who are used to wearing masks, like Taiwan or China or Vietnam, had really low death rates, even if they had high cases. And that's because a lot of people wore masks. And so people who did transmit the virus in these crowded places got less dose of it and became less sick and fewer people died because of it. Wearing masks truly does save lives. And here in the United States, if we had taken this seriously, and really had solid leadership on wearing masks 
100%, we probably could have saved a lot of lives. So masks are here to stay for the foreseeable future, which is sort of waking me up to the fact that I need a comfortable, effective mask. I don't really have one. I sort of use these like homemade masks. Don't really do the trick for long-term use, which is why I'm excited to be partnering with my friends at Bioskin. This is a company from my hometown. I actually grew up working at this place. They're a company who has focused on materials and fabrics and creating technical and breathable fabrics for sports bracing. And they've helped innovate in that space. And they've created a mask that is breathable and incredibly comfortable and comes in loads of different designs. They've run studies on this to find fabric that is breathable, but also effective in filtering. And I gotta tell you, I'm very happy with the design, the breathability. I find myself being able to wear it for long amounts of time and not feeling like I wanna take it off, which is sort of a dangerous thing when you wanna take off your mask. So they're safe and they're snug and they're durable. They're machine washable. They have a little metal thing on the nose, which helps keep a really tight seal around the nose, very important. And they come in these awesome three packs that are affordable and durable. Bioskin is offering a 10% discount to my audience. If you go to bioskin.com slash Johnny Harris, and enter the promo code Johnny Harris, you'll get 10% off. I 100% recommend these. Um, I know this company really well, I've known them for years, and I can vouch for the quality of this product. So, thank you Bioskin for supporting this channel. Thank you all for watching, and uh, wear your mask. Oh, and PS, they also have kids masks too, which is really cool. So, I have kids, and okay, bye.